Hey, deserving listeners, 90 Day Fiance, The Single Life. Let's watch. You're going to see you can trust me, and you won't have the same type of thing with, like you have with every, any other male. Why don't you want to give me a chance? It's not even about you. It's me. It's me. It's my problem. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Stop. It's not fucking funny. It is. Yikes. So I haven't been showing the, these scenes. Uh, they're on, I think, their second day. It's an all-day excursion. And Natalie, uh, he he, when they were on their date, he would occasionally put his hand on her back or something as they're walking, you know, just light little gestures. And she didn't make her feel very comfortable. I think she might have even said it was a cultural thing maybe. And she, you know, said so to him. And he was like, oh, okay. Uh, he seemed a little concerned about that. He's like, well, you know, this is a date, right? Like, and I wasn't doing anything bad. But, you know, I think he adjusted well enough. Uh, at least that's what I was thinking at the time. And now they're having another conversation and he's like, you know, what happened with your past relationship that makes you so standoffish with me? Um, as an asterisk to that, I'll say, you know, they're on their second date, you know, give it a break, guy. Like, she wants to go slow, take it slow. But he's asking her and she's like, well, you know, it's kind of tough, my relationship with Michael. And, I, you know, I'm just kind of worried about how things will go. And, and he's like, no, you know, I'm not going to be like that. And then I don't know if I showed this, but he said, your relation, your relationship with me, and I thought he was going to say, will be nothing like your relationship with Michael, which of course he can't know. But he didn't say that. He took it like 10, 10 times uh, bigger than that. He said, my, your relationship with me will be different than any other male. <laughs> what? <laughs> how would you know that? One. And two, What's going on in your personality that would cause you to say something like that? It'd be one thing to say, look, you don't have any reason to trust me, but um, I'm a nice person. I, I, I listen to people. I, I care about people. I would like to think of myself as a kind, compassionate person. Of course, you would know that and anyone could say that, but you know, you could say something like that. But to say your relationship with me would be different and better than your relationship with any other man on the planet. Like, okay. Then he strategically or decides to try to warm her up a little bit by grabbing her. Even though earlier she said, I don't I don't like random touches. And right now she's saying, it's, it's not you, it's me. I, I'm still really uh, pent up or distrustful or something. And totally understandable. And then he grabs her. She's like, what are you doing, pal? Tries to, pu does pull her towards him. She slaps him. Not a good sign <laughs> to the beginning of a relationship. I think, she, I, I'm curious as to how she would frame this. Is she going to say, never again, because that guy is extremely physically pushy? Or... What a fun little moment where he basically tried to physically assault, assault me and then I defended myself by slapping him across the face. Like, I don't know what's going to happen here. Let, let, let's rewind that and see that interaction. Type of thing it was like you have with every, any other male. Why don't you want to give me a chance? It's not even about you. It's mm -hmm. me. It's me. It's my problem. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. <laughs> Come here. Stop. It's not fucking funny. It is funny. Wow, that kind of hurt. Yeah, it's not funny. <laughs> and don't don't grab me. You can use your words. Uh, what are you doing? <laughs> so, yikes. Yeah, your relation, you know, your experience with me will be like it was never like with no other male. Yeah, on a second date where I was basically uh, assaulted in front of a bunch of cameras <laughs> after I explicitly said. I'm not comfortable with touching at this point. Like, dude, like talk about a red flag. I want to go home. Okay. Let's get you. Yeah. Good for her. Really. I mean, talk about a red flag. Your relationship with me will be better than any other man. Um, I know you said earlier that you'd, you don't want to be touched at this point, but I'm going to grab you and pull you towards me. And then you're gonna slap me, and then he's like, "Let me in." Like, 
I'm just sometimes I just like to put myself in these people's shoes. Like if I was that dude and I had somehow stupidly done that, and she slapped me, I'd be like, "Oh my god, I'm so sorry. Like I made the wrong call there." But he just sat there, like staring at her, thinking that he could break through or something. I, I you know, giving him the benefit of the doubt, I, I would imagine that he thinks that he was doing her a favor, that she needs to open up and she'll benefit if she opens up. Okay, but you don't uh, misogynistically (laughs) go against someone's physical integrity and requests for non-touching and essentially assault someone. I mean, I, I don't know if it's legal assault, but putting hands on, grabbing non consensually let's just put it that way, you know, she explicitly said, and she was in the process of saying, I kind of need to put my walls up now again. Now, maybe later on she'll say, well, it, I, I, maybe I need someone like that to kind of push past my boundaries. But either way, I would say <laughs> that this really, this date is um, kind of a bust. Yeah. Things happen too fast. All of a sudden, he would just pull me over and I just react. Yeah, yeah. I mean, some someone non-consensually grabs you and pulls you into them. Yeah, and I, so I would say of the reactions, her reaction is perfectly justified. You know, physical. You're gonna you're gonna physically assault me. I'm gonna defend myself with a physical assault and tell you like, back off, pal. Like, absolutely, it was justified. It is the end of Johnny. I will not go out with him again. Definitely feel rejected. I apologized for what I did just because she didn't like what I said or did doesn't make me any less of a gentleman, so. Yikes. (laughs) Oh boy. I mean, most definitions of what a gentleman and gentleman is, is the opposite of what he did. (laughs) I mean, Especially the word gentleman, right? Like if he had said, doesn't make me any less of a man, then of course you have toxic masculinity included in that. But gentlemanly behavior is consent, respect, going at the other person's pace, being being nice, uh, you know, all those things, which is, you know, now again, he could say, look, I was trying to help. How in the world would you think that would help? And so... He doesn't see it. Again, if he was apologetic, like, oh my God, I can't, I just a total gaff. I don't know what I was thinking. Then there'd be some promise there. But the fact that he's like confused as to her reaction, that he physically assaulted her on a date. And, and then you start looking back at the previous behavior where he's putting hands on, which at the time I thought, well, you know, he's on a date. So you do that sometimes. Uh, regardless of gender, people will, you know, oh, we're, we're, it's a little bit of physical flirting and and they're in public and he wasn't like grabbing her. It was on, you know, her shoulder blade or something. But when you think about that whole thing and how she was continually made to feel uncomfortable. Yeah. So interesting response from him. So maybe she'll come around to realize that, Hey, I wasn't that bad of a guy. I thought, I was making her feel comfortable. Sucks. Yeah, so, you know, maybe if we could hear more from him, we would understand. I don't want to accuse him of any anything other than what happened. And maybe this is the only time this has ever happened with him. Uh, who knows? But uh, if I were Natalie's friend, I would say, ah, let's keep looking. Can I walk into your room? No. Let me be a gentleman. No, thank you. No, okay. good night. All right, good luck. Take care. I'm very disappointed that this date turned out not the way I expected, and I'm angry with myself, uh, and I feel like bad. Well, that's heartbreaking, and a common response to having been assaulted. I, I don't know if I should use the word assault. Let me know in the comments what word would be appropriate here. But to be non-consensually touched. I think that's pretty um, good. You know, I think that is appropriate. 
that afterwards as a recipient or victim of non-consensual touch, the individual will often blame themselves, which is incredibly unfair to the individual. We tell a lot of people, uh, regardless of gender, particularly women though, that you know they must have been asking for it, how come they must have been giving off signals? Uh, uh, why did you even think that this person wouldn't do that? You know, you deserved it. You know, there's all these messages, and I don't know about her society and in, in terms of how they socialize women, but I know in mine that's something that happens. And then there's there's a pattern, of course, when you see other women being non are the people being non consensually touched. We have a tendency to blame that person the victim and so you watch that and you go oh if i if that happens to me it must be my fault this is why the me too movement was necessary that you know the thing that i would always say is when someone stabs you or mugs you you know you're walking down the street or you're at work and one of your coworkers just like pushes you down and takes your purse or stabs you in the back with a shiv or something 99 percent of the time you're going to the police with that right you're going to tell everyone. You're going to just start screaming like, "Oh my God, that 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 guy that I work with, or see that person over there. He just, you know, they just stole my purse." There's an immediate response. Why? Because a crime just happened. You're a victim. You report it. But somehow, when you're physically assaulted, particularly sexually, almost no one reports it. Why is that? A crime has has occurred. Why do, especially when it's like your boss or you know, on a date or something? How come no one reports it? If you went on a date and someone stole your wallet, you'd call the police. You'd tell everyone. You'd go on Instagram. Do oh, you want to believe this data went on? Why do people have a harder time coming forward when it's a physical assault, sexual assault? Well, there are multiple factors. The biggest one, in my estimation, is our society is so screwed up around sexuality and around gender and around sexual assault victimhood that we believe it is the victim's fault. We believe they must have asked for it. We believe that uh, they're lying or they shouldn't have been in that position to begin with or they're a baby. About, you know, there's all these messages. They're slutty, you know, all the, you know. We, uh, ugh. <laughs> uh, they might have a hard, particularly if you're a woman, you might have a hard time finding, uh, if you're a heterosexual woman, might have a hard time finding someone to date you because people think that you're tainted, you're impure. If you're a guy and you come forward, people think you're lying because men can't be sexually assaulted, which of course is ridiculous. Or uh, you're being a, a pussy if you're a guy. Uh, you, know, you know, you should have been able to fight her off or something like that. It's just like, my God. So why do so few people come forward? Now, the Me Too movement was an, an effort to say, me too. This has happened to me too. And look at all of us, you know, in solidarity together, having been silenced by society and the judicial system, the, the legal system, the law enforcement system, the societal system, the HR system, the, the media. All of us have been here and we've been silent because, you know, this is very, it's very uh, common experience made more common by the fact that perpetrators are framed in a way that allows them to get off the hook. And so I'll commend Natalie for immediately responding with a slap at self-defense completely, a statement of, I want to go home. This, uh, you know, that did not feel good. And then she starts to blame herself, which is all those messages. And, um, just truly tragic. I hope that, I hope that, I mean, I don't know, but I wouldn't be surprised if this experience causes a, an additional trauma, distrust of dating or of other people, you know, of like, well, if it's going to be like that, my goodness. I get defensive, aggressive, it's my nature. I need a man who understand me by my side. This is perfect man for me. I don't want any other man. Well, it's not asking for much <laughs> to, to want someone to respect your physical boundaries and to not think it's gentlemanly to grab you and pull you close when you've explicitly said that touching is uncomfortable for you at this stage. I mean, she definitely seemed like she liked him. 
and probably would have been up for consensual touching in the future. So, you know, why did he make that step? He easily just could have been like, hey, how about a hug? You know, would you like to kiss? Uh, I don't want to make you, you know, that would have been gentlemanly. So absolutely, like huge red flags. Who knows? Maybe it was a total anomalous behavior that he exhibited. But when you're dating, sometimes you have to make those judgments so that you don't waste your time. All right. Well, that is it for that episode. Everyone out there, please take care of yourself and take care of others because we all deserve it. We really, really do.